you know, it's interesting too, especially as a fellow psychonaut, um, my last journal entry after my trip, well, like kind of during the wind down phase of my last psilocybin trip, um, that was literally one of the lines that I wrote down, give yourself the permission. And I was just like, whoa, I really don't. I don't give myself the permission to relax into my life sometimes. I look for someone else to tell me it's okay to do what I want to do. Good, I'm loving that you're loving the vibes. So this is the video that we're gonna do today. If any of you would like to follow along, I am not a well-practiced yogi. Um, I'm still very new to it, so we're just following along with the YouTube series called Yoga with Adrian. Today we are in her Explore playlist, which is for October 2019, and we are going to be doing the video called 15 Minute Yoga for When You Are Stuck. Here's the link again in case any of y'all need it. No, it's, it's totally fine, you know, if I'm doing it with a camera on me, I understand that like it's not quite as much of a solo reflection period as it would be if the camera were off, but I take that time for myself every day. So if my camera is on and I'm here, watch, listen, chill, put me on in the background, whatever feels right. I'm going to get this yoga out of the way so I can get back to talking to all of you and preparing for our meditation that we're going to do at the end of this. Oh, I'm so glad that my little pupper is just relaxed. Howdy everyone and welcome to Yoga with Adrian. I'm Benji. Adrian, this is sweet Benji. And hey, it happens, we get stuck. So yoga, particularly at home, is the perfect opportunity to just make forward movement. Exactly, forward breath at a time. So this little ditty is designed to help you get unstuck, to help bring some gentle energy back to the body so that you can get moving in a direction that feels good. Right. Is something comfy? Thank you for the following. Welcome. We are going to begin standing today. So stand up tall. Take a moment to go, you know what? I'm going to give this my all because my goal is to move my energy in a way that serves. My goal is to get out of a, maybe a yucky feeling or a situation where you just feel tired, that kind of heavy, you know, <coughs> low energy feeling. So wherever you are meeting yourself today, just come as you are and then let's give it our best shot, right? Let's have some fun. Okay, there's your pep talk. <laughs> We're gonna start with the feet really wide. So go ahead and step the feet as wide as your yoga mat. You don't even really need a yoga mat for this practice today. Um, but you wanna make sure that you feel grounded in your feet here. So if you're not on a mat or say you're on a carpet and you don't feel grounded, just morning, Jimmy. your stance, you know, you don't have to go so wide because you want to be able to feel nice and grounded in the legs. Okay, and the feet are going to be parallel for this one. And then super nice and slow. Okay, so it's just super easy is what I was going to say. You're going to send the fingertips out left to right. Inhale. Pause. Keep inhaling as you reach fingertips towards the sky. And then you're just going to let it all down with control. So again, you may not get this on the first time, so I'll just talk you through it. You're gonna inhale halfway, stand up tall, pause, retain the breath. And then from here, keep inhaling all the way up, more air in. And then exhale to let it all go. Okay? So once you start to catch on, you can give it your best shot. Inhaling, halfway, pause, retain. And then continue, inhaling, sipping air all the way in as you reach up. And then exhaling, go. So you may not be on my uh, rhythm, so I'm going to let you give it a couple goes on your own. <laughs> oh, little pity snores. And you can play with how long you retain your breath, both at the halfway mark and at the top, once you start to get the hang of what you're doing, okay? Keep going.
Oh, I slap my little hands here. Wherever you are, do one more. And when you do that final exhale, just imagine letting go of any stagnant energy, anything that's not serving you. Okay, okay. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. here in a little superhero posture, hands on the waist. So if you are a little tired and that's why you selected this video, ground through the feet even more. It seems a little counterintuitive to put more energy into it when you're already low on energy. You want to set yourself up for greatness and kind of tell the body and the brain that we're going to move things along, right? If you're feeling stuck, really, this is the best way to gently, and I do mean gently, move forward. Yes. So start to activate firmly through the legs, draw energy up through the arches. Take a deep breath in here, and exhale, draw the elbows back. Twice more, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, draw the elbows back. Oh, yeah. And one more time, big breath in. Exhale, draw the elbows back. Great, pause here, breathe in deeply. And exhale completely. Cool, from here, try to keep this retraction, your shoulder blades coming together as you release the fingertips and interlace behind your tail. I have a tail. Knuckles draw down and away, and we keep that connection through the legs. Imagine lifting up a bit in your kneecaps so that your quadriceps are kind of active and toned. Cool, then here comes a big move, so breathe deep and stay grounded through your feet. And again, nice action in the legs as you lift your chest, maybe send your gaze up towards the sky or the third eye. And then slowly, you're going to hinge at the hips nice and slow, reaching forward. Sits bones reach back, heart reaches forward. Halfway, long, beautiful neck here, and then slowly rise back up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, twice more. Inhale, exhale. Heart reaches forward. We go halfway, and then release. One more time. Big inhale, exhale. Halfway, and then this time you're going to release the arms and allow them to come to the earth. If you can't get to the earth, you can grab a surface, maybe a couch or a table, mm. or you can just work on core activation by bringing the palms together at your heart. Oh, that day of really Obviously, intense this is your yoga the other day has my life to find still sore. What feels good, so you can take variations here of a twist, maybe bringing one hand to the earth and taking one up to the sky. You can also take mm. one hand to opposite leg and the other hand to opposite leg. Mm. Ooh, huh? And then if you can, See if eventually you can allow the head to come down below the heart as you ground through the feet and breathe deep. Just getting a good flush here, soft bend in the knees. You're here for one more breath. You got it wherever you are, even and out. And then ground through the feet, bring the hands back to the waistline, and with control, slowly come up through that flat back position, and then all the way back. Whoa, and then just allow your hands to come to your sides with a mindfulness and feel that flush of energy. Cool, so from here, you're gonna turn the right heel in, should feel really good. And you're gonna try Nicely done, heel Laura. In. Feet are strongly planted to the earth still. Left. Good, then you're gonna inhale, send your fingertips out left to right, and exhale, bend your right knee. You can widen your stance here if you need, but it's not necessary. Just find what feels good front knee, not going beyond that front ankle though. Okay, so now we're in warrior two, or a version of warrior two. Pull the pinkies back, inhale in, exhale, straighten the front leg, reach for the sky, palms kiss together. And again, you can widen your stance to a full warrior if you want. Inhale, warrior two, exhale, all the way up, reach. Once more, warrior two, keep breathing. Reaching up towards the sky. Now turn the right toes in, left toes out, take it to the other side. Warrior two, and then reaching up. And I'll actually let you just think of with the breath, whichever way that feels good. Point being, you don't have to be exact today, you just want to move your body and kind of make it your own. So move with your breath. Expressing yourself is an amazing way to get unstuck. So putting on some music, dancing while you make your breakfast, Putting on some music while you're in the shower. And the next time you have straight legs and you're reaching up, you're gonna turn the left toes in, 
keep the right toes turned in, just reconnect feet, reset. So both toes are turned in just a bit. And you're gonna inhale in, and then exhale. Rain the fingertips down, so wiggle the fingertips. You're gonna interlace, and then here's a big power pose. Knuckles draw down and away as you lift your chest up towards the sky. Inhale in, and then exhale to release. And you're gonna walk the feet to just a little bit wider than hip width apart here. And you knew it was coming, right? We're gonna do a variation of knocking on heaven's door. So knocking on heaven's door is soft bend in the knees, and you're just gonna start to swing back and forth, kind of slapping your own. Booty. I do this now in my free and time. Get into it feels that good. too. Maybe this will help you get unstuck. Just smack that butt. <laughs> but then we're what gonna do it further. Okay. What you doing, yeah. sweet boy? Finding a little self-expression. Oh. I know this is like it's okay. the most annoying thing. In Go the back world. to sleep, to some baby. Some people are like, yes, let's do it. Hey, but baby. this is gonna help get you unstuck. I, I have no doubt. I don't know what you're so hearing, you're gonna but take this it's okay. action here again. Remember, softness in the knees just and the right same there. connection Relax. awareness in the feet that you've had boy. already. You're gonna keep going. We're getting the blood flowing. We're getting out of Good our boy. head and Go into my sleep, car. Little baby. No, and into our bodies, getting unstuck. And then here you go. You're just going to kind of free form. What are you doing? Where so you are you going? You might feel like a fool. And that's the point. You're going to move back and forth. Do you need me to move music this? In your mind. See so if you can get down. I got to move you guys for a sec. All right. Go ahead and get down if you want to get down, little piggy. Let it flow. Let it be lyrical. Don't down? worry about what you're doing. Just be mindful of your joints. Find your breath. If you want to take a circle. A spin one way, and then the other you can. I don't know what you think you're hearing, my butt. Then Why don't you lay down? Slowly, find it back down. Oh, you poor boy. There you go. You just had a nice nap, didn't you? That wasn't so scary, buddy. Didn't you? Maybe. You sweet baby. You're doing great. Right from here, bring your hands to your sides. Walk the feet together, really together. Zip up tight through the legs. Inhale in. Exhale, you're going to bend the knees. Send the fingertips out in front. You're going to bring your right arm underneath your left. Palms come together or maybe pinky to thumb or you can just take it to a cool yoga ninja posture. Yeah. From here, sink a little lower and lift the right leg up. Cross it over the left. You can stay here or if you want, wrap the, the right foot behind. Eagle posture. Inhale, lift your elbows up. Find your focus as you exhale. Sink a little deeper. Focus down and in front. Keep breathing here. Eagle pose. A variation is to just do the arms and maybe bend the knees, or you can even keep the legs straight and just do the arms. Inhale in. Exhale. Release. Hold on to your focus. Inhale. Reach for the sky. Exhale, release it down on mountain pose. <sighs> Bend the knees, drop your center down. So now you know where we're headed, so find your drishti, your focus. Beautiful. Then arms first, let's go left arm underneath. I love this deep pose. Stay here, oh. or left leg crosses up and over, maybe wraps it Feels so good on my There's shoulders. No need, no, no real necessity uh, to copy me, to emulate a posture that you think is eagle pose, just make make it your own. You know your body, listen, and hold on to a nice focus out in front as you breathe deep. Mm. Great. Inhale in, mm. exhale to unravel. Awesome, inhale, reach the arms all the way up. And exhale, release oh. the fingertips down. Beautiful, bring the hands to the heart. Anjali Mudra. Interlace the fingertips. Inhale, send the index finger, the steeple grip, all the way out. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands in line with the heart. With your breath, inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands in line with the heart. Keep going. In this repetition each time, see if you can find something new, maybe feeling that corset of the ribs, that loop of energy that we're always speaking about here in the community. Lifting up through the front body, grab and back. 
As you inhale, you can think of your belly long. And as you exhale, you can think of the navel drawing back in toward the spine. Feel my arms waking up. Let's do three more. And after your three, release your hands gently to your side. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up to the earlobes. And exhale. Ta-da. Take a moment to notice how you feel. What? <laughs> Close your eyes. You little baby. <sighs> and then bring the hands together at the heart. Open the eyes. So if you need more, you can rinse and repeat. You can repeat this sequence, or you can find another video that might feel good, but I definitely think that this is the beginning of something awesome, just doing this little bit. So take advantage if you're feeling it, follow your heart. If you're not already subscribed to the Yoga with Adrian YouTube channel, please subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel and share this one, uh, this video with someone who you think might benefit. Love you guys so much. Tell us how it went in the comment section down below. Mm. From my heart to yours, namaste. Good morning, little guy. You had a really nice little nap, didn't you? What woke you up, huh? What got you out of that nap? That was nice. Nice and not too rough for today. Not too bad. Oh man, did anyone do that with me? Thank you. Oh, what a sweet boy. Blech. Mm. Oh, my hips are popping. Sweet, sweet baby. Sweet, sweet angel baby. Gary. I'm glad that you challenged yourself a little bit though. You did some stretches in your chair. That's what's up. Your coworkers think you're weird enough. Yeah, heck them. Let them think you're weird. Hey little guy. day, isn't it, Capone? Mm. My beautiful little bubber. free indeed what keeps spooking you huh what keeps spooking you little baby what a little baby Here, i'll move this so you can lay back oh 
Enjoy your dog walking. Enjoy it. Have an amazing day, Gary, and I will see you later. Mm. For now, I'm gonna lay here with my pupper, talk to my friends, that's you guys. Oh, man. All the workouts we did um, this week have really got my hammies sore. <laughs> Do you require more love and attention? Oh, man. It's crazy how sore they are. Mm, 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 mm. Feels great, though, Capone. Don't worry. This is a good thing. It just feels great. You're a stressy boy today. Why are you stressy? Huh? Well, your brother's paying attention now because I freaked you out, huh? What's your problem? Doggies. They're so silly. Man, I'm excited for today. I'm excited for today and for tonight. I'm excited that Camdell is going to be on the podcast tonight. I'm excited that y'all will have another opportunity to get to know her a little better, a little differently. Mm -hmm. Oh, there goes Enzo. Just loving himself. What? What? Where are you going? <laughs> what are you doing? Are we going outside now? Do you need to go potty bun? You just gonna watch some dog TV? You can come lay on the mat if you want to, buddy. I won't yell at you because I already did my yoga. Yes, I'm ready for it for you as well, Bosif. Do you need to go potty? Do you even know what you want right now? Do you want to go outside? Do you want to come on right now? Do you want to come lay down? Don't be a weird dog. Quit licking the rug. Quit it. Quit it. Hey. No. No. I don't know why dogs do that. The sense is not making. Yes. So they will, but here's where, here's where I'm at right now. I had to stop working with my editor. It was nice, Thrust. It was a quick one. I'll let you out, buddy. Oh. All right. So I couldn't, I couldn't afford a podcast editor anymore, even though ugh, Nick and Mick was, it is an amazing editor. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm paying him to create a template for me so that I can start doing my own editing. And since I won't be able to pay for it until like I get paid next, which is the 15th, um, it's looking like I'm just going to have to backlog 
episodes by putting them out on YouTube and having the VODs on Twitch. Um, and then, <laughs> hi boo boo. And then once I have that template and I can edit them and put them up, then they'll go out on Spotify and Stitcher and, um, you know, the Apple podcasts and stuff. The sensation of licking? Six weeks? Grateful that it's not seven. Did you see my Instagram? There's some, some boo in there. Being a heckin' cutie. That's so nice, Lost Souls. I have a very hard time with the idea of allowing anyone to work for me for no money. Um, it, it puts me in a situation where I feel awkward being specific. It makes me feel like, um, like a beggar and a chooser, you know? So, oh, good downward dog. Excellent form, buddy. Good job. Um, so, like, hi, Sony. I super appreciate that. Lost souls. Ah, 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 buddy, you're getting too close to the cords. Come on. And so, I know you need to lick the area where Capone just was. This dumb pup. Morning, Lady Death. Come on. Nope, don't boop that. Back it up. Careful. Easy. Good. No, don't boop that. I don't have to clean the lens from your smudge. Fucking dog. You're gonna have to wait for your brother to come in, Enzo, so sit. Sit. Hey, act like you can hear me, punk ass. <laughs> he just barely missed snoot booping you fully. Because if he did, he's so moist all the time, you definitely would have seen a smudge. Hi, Sparks. Now you've seen the Instagram. Boo is so cute. What a sweet little baby girl. Good sit, Enzo. Just stay. When your brother comes back in, you can go out. Thrust. Gimme, 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 gimme. Ha, <laughs> Stony. Just wait, you're being so good, Enzo. Stay. <sighs> Anyone else in here have TMJ? I notice that when I leave my jaw dropped as I do this neck stretch, I can feel my jaw kind of popping around, but it feels so good. It feels like it's relieving pressure in my ears sometimes. Oh, um, it's something I still try to avoid, but like, I don't really see the harm in that, you know, like you can't, you have allergies, it is what it is. Maybe at some point in the future, allergy science and technology and medications will improve to the point where you can just go and like rub your face on a pile of cats. Um, but I, I like to use in place of wish, I would like. So I would like to pet that cat. I would love to pet that cat. I would very much enjoy that. <laughs> oh. So yeah, then in that case, um, you can you can certainly go big with it and say one day I'm gonna be petting some fucking kitties. Ow, Enzo, you're on my foot. Hey, one in, one out. In, out, go. Stay, 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 mister, you stay. Come on. I know, buddy, I know. Oh, I can't have you running off with your little wet butt. Good boy. Good boy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, your little baby legs. I love you so much. I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry. I know that's not comfortable, is it? You sweet boy. Where's your other little paw? That one. There you go. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. You need help? There you go. That's my little guy. I like that you're questioning stuff like that, though, Thrust. Like, genuinely, that's pretty fucking cool to think that you're, you're looking at your language in such great detail, you know? Nice, beautiful fall day coming at us. Coming at us. I think so, yeah, I think that they're on varying scales. That's cute, Thrust! Aw, oh, that makes me happy. That brings me great joy. It is still a thing, it is. Thank you, Lost Souls. I, I do really appreciate that. And I'll, I'll consider it and maybe take you up on it just for the sake of getting maybe like the next two or three episodes out while I wait on, um, what do you call it? <laughs> while I wait on getting that template from Nick. It is cold. It's cool that you're grateful. I like it. What up, Pippi? Like, you've seen it thrust with the, the self-talk. I, I have a hard time saying mean things about anything, including myself and, like, inanimate objects. If I, like, stumble and, like, stub my toe on a chair or something, my first reaction would have been, like, stupid fucking chair. And now, like, if I catch myself doing that, I'm like, I'm sorry, chair. I appreciate you. I like to sit on you when I have my meals, and that's cool. <laughs> 25, 30 degrees out. Seasons are beautiful. Come here, boo-boo. I love you. And I love you. I love you. What good babies. That's good that you have a chill morning at work. That's always nice. Thank you, Lost Souls. Genuinely, like, your time is valuable, you know? I, I appreciate that you're willing to offer up any of it for the sake of helping another person. Oh, your brother's back. All right, I gotta go clean some puppy feet. Ugh. in here and sit, sit, stay. I know, boo boo. Oh, stay, Enzo. Good stay. Good stay. Oh, that's a good boy. No. Sit. 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 Good sit. You smell like you might have walked in some poopy. Let's see this other foot. Hey, what did I tell you? Stay. Good boy. Just, yup, that's a poopy paw right there. Gross. We're wiping your nasty nastiness. <sighs> okay, good boy. Stay. Stay. Mm. 
A good boy, Enzo. You're doing such a good job. Give me this one now. Good boy. Ah, ah, ah. No running off yet. With your nasty paws. All right. Good. Don't lick your brother's dick immediately, dude. Gross. The poopy paw cleanup. Ugh. Yeah, it's not my favorite either. You're contemplating going back to sleep. What are the alternatives? What impact might that have on your day? That's very nice. Thank you, Lady Death. I'm, I'm happy to help in any way I can. Okay, Hippie Pierre. So, let's rework what you just posted. I need to do work on my positive self-talk. I definitely get angry at inanimate objects as well as myself when I mess up. How can you rephrase that entire little paragraph or sentence into something positively affirming about yourself? How can you change the narrative that you are now telling your brain? <laughs> and that's fine, Thrust, that's fine. It's, um, it's so hard to explain because I understand that, that a lot of people find it to be silly, right? But it, it does make me feel better when I put more positive things out in the world and I release my urges to put out negativity. Like even something as silly as calling a chair dumb. It's like, it's like I stop being grateful for it when I insult it and then I feel frustrated with myself for not being more grateful. So I try to catch myself and remember that like, it's not a dumb chair, it's just a chair and I'm grateful that it's there. Cursing it out may make me feel better, but it's kind of reaffirming a behavior that I'm letting go of, which is cursing at anything when I'm feeling frustrated or cursing when I feel frustrated versus digging into those sensations and feelings and seeing where they come from and what I can do with them. Oh, right on your little tail. Okay, good, good first attempt, hippie. Good first attempt. So whenever I notice someone uses the word need or I should or I want to, I try to turn that into an I am statement or I am a person who does statement. So for what you said there, this is how I would have personally reworked it. Um, I am a person who works on my positive self-talk daily. I, you could say, you used to get angry at, at inanimate objects, but now you are grateful for everything around you. Um, I am a calm person. I explore my sensations of anger rather than exploding with them. I am a person who works to see the good in situations. I am a person who takes a breath before I react. You get where I'm going with this? If you can say I am versus I am working on, I am someone who positive self-talks myself um, daily. I am a person who says nice things about myself. Or just straight up, I love myself. I'm amazing. I fucking rock exactly as I am now. Give yourself some present tense language versus I will, I'm working on, I'm working towards. Fuck him up, boo-boo. That's interesting, Thrust. Are you interested in an exercise for that? I literally just worked through this exact thing with one of my coaching clients. I am a mushroom. <laughs> I am fungi. Yay! Okay, so thrust. Do you have a sensation and an idea of why you get so road ragey, why you get so frustrated when you're driving. 
cool hippie. I, I'm glad that that helped a little bit. So what I would suggest that you do now that you kind of have a better sense of how affirmations work, think of some of the things that you struggle with. Think of some of the things that you're trying to do, some of the things that you want to do. Grab a notebook or grab like a note on your phone and write out some statements that flip that shit on its ass. So if you are a person who's, who, if your biggest issue is procrastination, think of a way to positively affirm, I'm a person who gets shit done. I prioritize my tasks and move through my day effortlessly or with intention. Um, if you struggle with falling asleep at night, same thing. I have a good sleep routine. I go to sleep at the same time every day to make sure that I can get adequate rest. I listen to my body and what it needs. Um, if you're struggling with anger or anxiety, I am calm. I am fully present. I am connected to my body. I take a moment to myself so that I can process my emotions, whatever. Look for those opportunities to tell yourself a story or to say, I am. Not I am going to, but I am. Write some of those down and make that something that you repeat to yourself over and over and over, not just when you're in the moment faced with whatever it is that you're struggling with, but before you ever get there. Tell yourself the story before it's time. Not butt stuff, that's not my jam. <laughs> oh man. You don't have to be anywhere until later and you're up later than expected. Is it, are you a person, Momo, who if you nap during the day, it makes it harder to go to sleep at the time you want to at night? Are you good at doing quick naps and then waking up and kicking ass? Yeah, I put she snaps in parentheses though, Laura. Hey, yummy, long time, how are you? Ooh. I like it, Jen, I like it. Do you think there's a chance we could set that intention to be even stronger? Is there a way that we could maybe make it so that you don't have to see that tweet at all? I love the intention though, I really do. Hi kitty girl. Why are you just doing this with your tail? only other source of, of female energy in this house is this baby girl. Yes, especially at this time of the month. You're good at the napping or yes, it might fuck up your sleep for later. Mmm, good. Yes, yes, yes. That's cool. So you're already a little further than, than some folks are when it comes to kind of exploring their own road rage, right? It's good to be aware of your feelings in the matter. It's good to take a second and be like, I don't want to feel this way. I'm going to choose something else and here's how I'm going to get there. Um, what I've found is that road rage basically stems from your ego getting poked. You know, someone's got a sharp stick and they're like, bing, bing, bing. So every time someone like stops in front of you or doesn't use their blinker or whatever and you start feeling that, that irritation come in, it's because it feels like a direct attack. It feels like someone is intentionally fucking with your shit. And the immediate reaction of most people is, how dare you? Do you not know that I have places to be, people to see, things to do? How dare you? do this thing that could have injured me or my family, that could have fucked up my car. And then when it does get close to your car potentially being damaged especially, your car, once you're in it, becomes an extension of yourself. So then your ego takes it in and says, me, mine, how dare you fuck with my shit? How dare you infringe on my space? My space. 
So, yo, sent in. Thank you so much for that. Um, so one of the things that I think helps us with ego is like the situation you're finding yourself in is frustrating, right? Because you haven't hit the root cause of it. You're, cre you're working on your reaction to the root cause. So I, I think a fun exercise is treat it almost like a compassion meditation. Go a little wild with your imagination and try and run through some of those scenarios. It's one thing to say, I'm sure any number of things could be going on, which is what's causing them to drive slow, which is causing them to not use their turn signal. But go deeper. Try to do it like a gratitude thing. You know, we put our hand up and we count to five. Think of five different things that may explain why they're acting the way that they're acting so that you can see that it is very likely not a personal attack on you. So the examples I was doing with my coaching client the other day was like, okay, what if they are, they just went through a massive breakup and they're really upset and they don't even know, like they're just not cognizant of what's going on because they're so upset and they're crying. What if they just got a cancer diagnosis for them or someone they love? What if they are exhausted and they're new parents and they're just so tired and trying really hard to focus on the road? What if they lost a puppy? What if their dog just died? What if, and I know a lot of this is a little sad and morbid, but I think sometimes that's the stuff that tickles our compassion and makes us stop thinking about how awful it is that we may be one minute behind schedule and gets us to remember that they are human. Who knows what is going on in their lives? So run through five possible scenarios. Maybe, and you can get weird with it to bring a little humor into life. Maybe they're driving slowly because they're uncomfortable because they got abducted by aliens the night before and got anally probed and now like sitting and driving is not pleasant. Who knows? But after you identify five potential reasons why they may be doing the thing that they're doing act, act like it is a compassion meditation and just extend your love and compassion to them may you be well whatever it is that's causing you to drive in this manner that had me so frustrated may you be well i hope you feel better and then as you extend that compassion outward you may start to feel that weight of your ego saying how dare they you may start to hear that voice get a little quieter. You may start to feel that pressure lessen. And then you can take that deep breath and say, I did my part. I connected to another person in this world. I remembered that not everything is about me, that really this car doesn't fucking matter, that me getting to work on time, yeah, it's important, but if it doesn't happen, me freaking out in the car on the way there isn't going to change it, you know? So, okay, Jen, you've identified an automatic behavior here. The odds are not good right now because it's something that we haven't planned for yet. And I'm not saying like what you've set as an intention is wrong or bad in any way, but I'm looking for a way to stop it before it starts. So do you pick up your phone in the morning because it's your alarm? Is that the first time that you touch it? You're welcome, Thrust. I'm excited to hear how it goes. Let me know your thoughts and, and what works out for you or doesn't. I am having a great start to my morning, Yummy. Oh, and thank you. You know, the dude abides. <laughs> right, Bosef? Oh, you're good at napping? Then get that nap, girl. Enjoy your nap. And Thrust, I really think um, making it sad or silly can really help snap you out of your grumpiness, right? Because feeling compassionate for someone else makes it hard to feel mad at them or at yourself. And laughing at the silliness that is life can do the same, right? Maybe they're driving weird because there's a hamster stuck up their butt and they're trying to get themselves to the ER for the fifth time, you know? <laughs> Okay, but is that, is your alarm on your phone, is that, what is the first thing that brings you to your phone and gets it in your hand? Is it the alarm? 
Absolutely, Santine. Any when it comes to anxious thoughts, separation is going to be especially valuable. Like meditation and calming methods can be wonderful for that because you can start to notice those anxious thoughts before you become anxious. So we're going to do a little five-minute meditation in like two minutes. If you haven't meditated before, I'd love to walk you through it. Additionally, one of the things that I think people don't realize is that anxiety, if you don't tackle some of the root causes of it, is a natural part of life and will spring up at you regularly. We're all going to have anxious thoughts. It's the way our brains were designed. But if you create a really good routine that prioritizes a presence of mind versus that forward thinking, then it gets easier and easier for your brain to say, okay, I don't have to operate this way. You're setting the tone for how I will work for you now. Does that make sense? All right, Momo. Half of these people are gonna poop their pants and they don't even know it yet. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Santine, in addition to the meditation that we're going to do shortly, which I hope you'll join us for, if you go on my website, there's an article titled Five Steps to Better Mental Health. Take a look at that. Or you can watch my talk from GuardianCon last year or watch my highlights. I have um, past broadcasts of my mental health streams. And I walk through some of the things you can do to set yourself up for a good mindset to cultivate that. It's silly and it works and it's not really silly, right? Because the, the possibilities really are endless for what could be going on in their minds, in their lives. Maybe it's a vision problem, who knows, but anger at feeling like it's about you and then getting angry that you're angry is such an unpleasant feeling, right? And I think one of the next challenges that I'm going to issue, because I've been working on deciding if I'm going to do those on Twitter or if I'm going to start throwing those on YouTube, but I'm going to start issuing these challenges in hopes that we'll do, do them one week at a time and then start stacking them. Hopefully bringing that awareness into every day. And one of them is definitely going to be awareness of ego. Trying your hardest to recognize when it's you deciding things and when it's your ego deciding things. Okay, okay. So... Let's try to problem solve here and outsmart your brain. So if you know you're likely to end up on Twitter and see that tweet and shut it down, that's a great like kind of foolproof plan of how to like stop yourself. But what if you did something like you set an alarm, a second alarm on your phone. So you normally get up, you go do these things, you set your music, and then after that, However long it would take for you to do those things, have a second alarm on your phone that goes off and says, put your phone down, you know? Because I've had to do that. Mine, I'm usually very aggressive with my wording, so it'll be like, bitch, put your phone down. <laughs> but I'm, I'm always looking for ways to trick my brain into doing the things that I want it to do or to give myself that little bit of like awareness again that brings that control back into my life. So it's the same with like the example of um, if you come home from work at the end of the day and you know you should be working out, you even have the weights, you've got a home gym, whatever, but you go to the couch and then the day disappears because you're on your phone. Put your weights on your couch, like stack your couch with shit so you can't sit down. So you have that moment of interruption of your automatic mind. So these things that we're challenged with they're especially challenging because of our lack of awareness, which our brains do to save us energy. You know, it's, it's either numb or it's novelty. If, if it's something you do all the time, your brain is going to work to allow you to not feel it so that it can do it with the most efficiency possible. So the more opportunities you have to, you know, splash some water on your face, so to speak, and bring yourself back to the present, the more control you have over what you do in that moment. And how does that make you feel, hippie, to wake up and, and look at what everyone else is doing or saying before you decide on your own intentions for the day? Mm, 
I just got a really great jaw crack. Yes. That's what's up, Jen. That's what's up. I am a person who starts my day with intention. I am a person who enjoys my time to myself before picking up my phone. I am a person who stays off social media until I've decided on who I want to be that day and what I want to accomplish. Okay. Hippie, so I'll ask you, I'll ask you that a similar question but a little bit differently worded. Do you feel it's necessary to start your day by taking in information? Or do you think it may be a good idea to get your music going? Yes. But then be in your head. Have some feelings about yourself and about the day before you let in the outside world. And Jen, I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm really glad to hear you sharing a little bit more about what you're working on and how you're gonna work on it. Very, very grateful that you chose to share that today. I know, um, I know at times your instinct is to, to hold it into yourself, so I'm, I'm exceedingly grateful that you've chosen to open up a little bit more with us today. My little piggy. Okay. Definitely think you respond to messages faster than you need to. Decide on a time frame, Pierre. Um, think about tomorrow morning. Think about how you'd like to start it and set a number. Whatever that number is, you know, like you're in control of your life. This isn't all about what I think is best or what I think is best for you. But choose to start your day with intention and decide how much time you're going to give yourself before you let the outside world in. Five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour, an hour. I try to stay off of my shit for the first hour. If I'm on there at all, it is only to put out or to like retweet something positive and affirming like the message of get the fuck off your phone, friends. Um, but I, I like that first hour at a minimum to be all about Externalizing, not internalizing. I'm, I'm letting, I'm putting things out into the world. I'm thinking about myself, what I want to do with my day, before I look at notifications, before I check email, before I do anything that isn't in here or in my near surroundings. You know. Hi, Shadow. Mm. Mm. Okay. It is time to do our meditation. Who in here, there's no shame in this of course if you aren't aware, if any of you have not tried mindfulness meditation yet and you'd like me to walk you through it, please let me know. We're gonna take just five minutes to do this. And just a reminder, meditation is not, this particular type of it especially, is not necessarily religious or spiritual in nature. It is brain training. We're going to do five minutes of brain training. We're going to build our skill of focus and awareness. 